So you've watched all my videos, you've tried all my hacks and you still can't get on with retinoids, what to do, how to unlock that glow or conquer pigmentation or tame those breakouts. Well, today's video is devoted to the ingredients that I think will serve you well as a substitute for retinoids so you don't need to feel shortchanged. And as an added bonus, this would also be suitable for pregnancy, which is a time, of course, when retinoids are not suitable because vitamin A is a signaling molecule in the developing fetus, so retinoids are a no-no. So let's look at it like this. Let's think about the function that retinoids serve and then look at an alternative ingredient group that might replace it. So the first one I'm going to talk about is their anti-keratinization properties. So their ability to normalize faulty keratinization at the plugs of the hair follicles where comedones or clogged pores happen due to abnormal charges between skin cells, stopping them from exfoliating away smoothly. So retinoids normalize that process. It's why they're so fundamentally helpful when it comes to solving and preventing acne. The good news is azelaic acid is one of the few ingredients that also has that capability also solving the tendency for our skin to form comedones. It's a little less potent, but it's also an, a lot less irritating. So a great dupe and something that's suitable for use twice a day, which can to some extent compensate for perhaps that lower potency, you can use it morning and night. The next action that we like from retinoids is increased cell turnover. That's part of what reveals that bright, rosy complexion, that freshness, as we see the cell cycles speed up. Cell cycles slowing is something we see as we age, and Ginger is kicking the sofa. Um, cats are curiously absent in today's filming because it's so hot, but there you are. Um, sorry if you're missing them or you tuned in just to see them. It's just me today. So yeah, they basically stimulate the cell cycle. So that's what reveals these bright, smooth, optically, kind of more pleasing skin cells underneath as the cell cycle speeds up. The good news is Bacuchiol, which is this retinal doppelganger plant derivative, is a good dupe for retinoids in that regard. And it's something that we also see brightening, smoothing and refining of skin texture with use. And like azelaic acid, it can also be used twice a day. So again, compensating for perhaps a little less potency by being suitable for twice daily use. Then we move on to improving skin pigmentation, whether from sunspots, just due to long-term cumulative UVA exposure, to post-acne marks, to melasma. Retinoids are effective in helping manage all three of these situations. The good news is there are lots of ingredients that we can use to unlock that skin tone improving benefit. Um, and we can combine ingredients potentially to achieve the potency of our retinoids. So, the list of ingredients that I like to use include azelaic acid, which is actually very powerful when it comes to improving skin tone. We can use niacinamide, we can use bacuchiol, we can use vitamin C, and potentially we can use those in combination together. And certainly if you're someone with sensitive skin, you'll want to start off slowly, you'll want to use things less often and build up the frequency just like you would with the retinoid. And again, you might potentially want to buffer, but using multiple ingredients together tends to be the best way to achieve the same sort of result that you might have achieved with retinoids alone. Then from a photo aging perspective, we have retinoids ability to stimulate collagen, perhaps one of the most important benefits that we use them um, to access. The good news, Bacuchiol, niacinamide and vitamin C all have collagen stimulating properties. And again, I find to be a great dupe for using a retinoid when used in combination um, and when used in conjunction with good quality sunscreen on a regular basis, of course. Now, if I had to choose just three to help replace my beloved retinoids, I would probably go for azelaic acid, bacuchiol and niacinamide. That trio to me covers the bulk of our retinoids properties and tends to be well tolerated. They have anti-inflammatory effects themselves, which often means that any tendency for irritation is mitigated for. Now you can use those individually. 
using brands like the Inky List or the Ordinary, where you can access each of those in ingredients individually, or you can try something like Flawless Brightly Serum, which contains all of them in one. And the great thing is, as I said, you can build up to using these ingredients twice a day for maximum impact, but always start slow, infrequently, so trying to use them every other day at the beginning, use your 13 dot technique, dose carefully, basically apply all the same rules that you would to using a retinoid. So as you can see, not being able to use retinol or another retinoid is not the end of the world. We have some great dupes and when used in combination, the power of synergy means that you can definitely achieve the goals that you're looking for, whether it be about glow, breakout management or brightening your skin tone. So I hope that was helpful. I hope that gave you a structure of how to approach building a skincare routine without a retinoid. Um, and do remember that skin's tolerance for active ingredients often changes with time. What you could tolerate, you know, six months ago might well be different to what you can tolerate in summer when weather is more humid. So do remember that skin is dynamic and Oftentimes, little tricks like using niacinamide to pre-treat your skin can increase its tolerance of actives that previously it couldn't tolerate. So nothing is set in stone, nothing is fixed, um, but hopefully this helps you structure a routine for where your skin's at today. Um, so let me know if this was helpful in the comments down below. And if you like this video, hit subscribe and like so I know. All right, guys, I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.